Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I'm reviewing the TR6S by Roland and I'm gonna tell you why did I bought it and why I didn't buy the TR8S instead. How does it sound? How is it to program sequence and play with? I will also give you some of my favorite tips and I will tell you as well what I like and what I don't like about this drum machine and if I regret buying it or not. So why I bought it? Well, having all of the Roland TR sound in one single box at your fingertips, it's such a nice thing to have, especially if you make house of techno. Now you can wonder why did I not choose the TR8S. First, I'm not planning to perform with, so I don't need to have that much parameter accessible. Second thing, I usually don't have more than six tracks for my drum. I mean, it can happen, but I never have like 11 like on the TR8S. And I'd rather to have something small that I can put very close to me on my desk where I have straight hands on it and I can quickly add a clap, a ride if I need. Rather than a TR8S, quite big machine, you need to find space and I don't have that space close to me rather than this one is super small it works with battery uh, i can take it anywhere so yeah that's why the reason i went with this one and not the tr 8s so does it sounds good that was one of my main worried and i was quite surprised to be honest it sounds good to me and you can go even further than just the classic tr sound for example with a kick you can make nice kick drum. That's one of my main worried as well because kick drum is so important in techno but then after you can get your classic more kind of tr sound there is a fm engine as well which sounds really good and i was curious how deep you can go into the tweaking of the sound so for example the bass drum i press shift in and i can control so for example for the bass drum you will have tune gk attack which you can add a little bit of click on top and then after it's level gain pan you have the send and then you can add the lfo and then you have fx so you have plenty of fx you have a very long list of fx for each instrument which can take for example the kick drum to the next level one thing i regret though it's sometimes there is no enough parameter for me to tweak like for example on the kick drum you don't have access to a pitch envelope on your kick drum and overall i really like how it sounds but I would just like to have more control over some parameter. So let me show you some pattern I made with. There is no external process, is how it is out of the box. No sample used. Everything is just with the internal things. It's kind of classic. 909. Right, so pretty cool here i have an empty pattern if you want to clean the pattern you just clear and press and you clear the pattern there was any nothing anyway and then you have different ways you can sequence you have the classic tier recording you can play live and instant recording so for example if i press shift and instant rake here i can play the sample live like this and if you just press instant rec and it's turned red now it will record when i play so i'm not going to do that because i'm pretty bad at but otherwise you have your tier recording which is classic tier recording so for example you can put your kick four to floor and let me program the closer hat so what i like to do usually with the closer hat is play with the velocity and one thing i like to do here is to play with the weak beat and the accent feature so for example i want my hat of beat at first and if you press shift and play one note and i want one weak beat on the beat you can see it's play like this and now i want to have a progressive velocity so having a low velocity med velocity and strong velocity here so what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna play my med velocity here sorry and now i want this one stronger in the middle of beat so what you can do is press both here and have an accent and i can put my accent off beat and you can control the volume of accent here and go back to your closer hat and maybe have a weak bit as well here so this way you have your closer hat pattern with a nice velocity 
One thing you can do is add what they call subset, which is kind of rattle effects or root trigger. So if I hold sub and I can choose the rate, so I'm gonna put one four and for example, I put it here. You're gonna hear how it does. And you have as well, what is called flam that you can put maybe here. Oh, sorry. When you see it's turning purple, so basically it's the same effect on this rattle there, but it's just playing two step. I'm gonna put a little graph on the screen right now and you can understand how it works. And here as well, you can control the velocity. So maybe you want one with a weak velocity. So one of the cool things you can do as well, you can edit parameter per step. So for example, you let's say you wanna play with the decay of your clothes I had. So let me bring in short and the one off bit I want to be more open. I just hold and put this one like this. And you can do that. And open, close, open. But you can do that as well, uh, live, click shift variation, make sure the motion is on. And then you can just you have your motion recorded. So you can do that with the DK, with the tune, you can do that with the control that you assign. What you can do as well is change the length of the track. So let's say you wanna program a, closer, a clap pattern, but you want it to be six step long. So you just press shift step loop and then you can reduce and stop here. And you can see it stop there. Rather than here is going all the way. So you can create nice polymeter. But yeah, one thing I didn't talk about is shuffle. You can add some shuffle as well on your pattern, which kind of give a bit more groove, important feature. Now I'm here with another pattern and I wanna talk to you about variation. Each pattern can have up eight variation. So for example, I this pattern like this here, but then I can You can change them as well. You can even add some drum fill. So there is different way you can shift fill intrigue where you can control the cycle and you can control which fill is gonna be applied. So you can choose fill one, fill two. You can choose the scatter effect as well that I can show you. making this kind of effect, but you can choose field one, field two, or you can choose any of your variations. So you can use, for example, let's say the H as a fill in. And for example, what you can do now, you can copy this and paste on the H. And once you copy, you go to your variation and you can edit the pattern. So I'm gonna add some snare, so more hats. You can do like, just show you and so now every time I will press on the fill in trig, it will trigger this pattern. So that can be great, for example, to transition between pattern. So let me play this pattern, then I will play fill in trig. It will trigger this pattern and I will move to this pattern here. So let's see, let me play. And now we switch the pattern. And again, if I press, But yeah, overall the workflow is pretty good. First, it's a bit overwhelming because you like you click to pick up your instrument and then after you shift to edit them, same with the kit, you can choose the kit, and then shift kit to edit like kind of the master parameter, the reverb, the delay. But then once you get the things, it's pretty easy and pretty nice to just select shift and instrument to edit, go to the parameter you like. The sequencing is pretty straightforward and pretty good. But yeah, let me give you some tips I like to use. So one thing I like, for example, if you go into instant play, so you can play your stuff and you can play live and you can play some roll. So you hold roll here and you can And you have the 32. 
lots of cool things to add variation live. One thing I haven't talked about is the step loop. So I have my pattern playing. And you can select a certain step and it will repeat this step only. So you can create nice weird effect. So if you take one with a clap, for example. And the cool thing is you can like, for example, pick up four to kind of create a new pattern out of your existing pattern. So for example. Yeah, that can be a great idea to generate a pattern. You can as well hold pattern and sample to kind of generate a random pattern. And if you generate something you don't like, you can go to utility and you go to reload and you can reload the pattern. And you will have your original pattern. So that's work as well for kids instruments. So that can be great if you do a mistake or if you tweak too much something and you want to get back to the original one. That's a great thing to do. So another trick I like to do, if you like to layer sound, for example, you want to layer the kick with too simple, you can make group instruments. And you can see here, you have my bass drum and I have the SD, which is looks like they kind of sync. And if you can ch check here, there is no program on the snare drum. And if I press play, you still hear something is playing even though there is nothing. And if you go to bass drum, you can see it's following the bass drum. And that's the way I layer the kick I, with this sample, this sample together. And the way to do that, you go to shift kick and now you, ho you hold your master track. So the one who's gonna control the other track. So here's my bass drum. And then if I hold, you can see I have instrument group bass drum. And now you can select which one you wanna link to. So here I don't have anything linked, but I can choose snare drum. I can do low tom, HE, and you see you have different kind of little image for either if you are a slave or M like the master, the, the first one is the bass drum. And then you can decide to all follow the master one, which is the bass drum. So I'm just gonna put the snare and then you have. So that can be great because if you decide to change your kick pattern, it will follow. You doesn't need to edit here as well. So that can be, even if you play live, for example, as well, that can be nice because for example, let's say you layer some clap and snare and you want to do some roll live. Obviously you cannot do that if you have two separate sequencing track, but when you can link the sequencing track with just one, you can just play the one master and then it will play both together. Another tip I like to do with the kick drum, especially if you have a gain parameter in your instrument and if you crank up this to the, to the maximum, it creates some nice distortion. So. If I see this nice distortion, this is a tip I like to use to crank up the gain. And obviously you can also use different type of effect. You have drive, you have compressor, you have a saturator, but yeah, using gain is a, it's a great way as well to saturate your kick drum. So one of the cool things as well, you have an LFO and what I like to do is for example, applying to the ride. You can go to shift instrument. And you have LFO tune where you can tune the, the def. So you can go just to your LFO and you can pick up different value. You have, I'm gonna pick tune and you can adjust the amount. And then if you go in the setting on your master kit, you can as well control the LFO, the rate, the waveform. So that's pretty good. I like to do it as well with the GK of the hats, for example, you can you choose to open and close automatically. Now keep in mind that with just one LFO per kit. So you can apply LFO to each track, each individual track with a different amount and a different destination, but the waveform and the speed are the same for all of the instruments. So that can be a bit pain in the ass. And speaking of things I don't like, let's talk about that now. So I would have loved to have a LFO per track where you can control the rate and the waveform per instrument. So one thing that is quite a shame with the LFO is that 
In terms of waveform, you have a saw, but it's basically a saw up and you don't have the saw down, which means that you cannot modulate, for example, the pitch of your kick to having a kind of nice pitch envelope with LFO. You cannot do that. You cannot do side chain with the LFO, you know, of, or to having a pumping effect on the volume. You can do that with the velocity, but it doesn't feel the same. You know what I mean? How it can be nice to have a pumping effect with the LFO. You cannot do that here because you don't have the saw down waveform, which is quite unbelievable, but it is what it is. And speaking of missing features, obviously like i said sometimes there is some parameter i would love to have a bit more control for example the kick like i said the pitch envelope and the pitch decay like i understand sticking to the original things it's great but you could add as well some extra stuff another thing which i'll be denied maybe it's too much to ask but would have been resampling like for example like i say i was distorting my kick it would have been nice if i could just resample or like i can send you have some effect you can send your kick create a rumble resample the rumble this would have been nice so this way you can use in the first time a reverb to create your rumble resample your kick resample your kick with your reverb rumble and then this way you could use the reverb or the delay for the other element that would have been nice now let's talk about the worst things the thing that i hate so much this machine for and i'm saying that because i'm a windows user and i'm not a mac user but the audio through usb it's a nightmare because in order to have you separate input inside Ableton on Windows, you cannot really do that except if you do some, you use Azure for all or use some kind of program which creates more problem than than really solving it. You know, I would just have expected something like the overbridge with Electron, which is just you plug, you put a plugin and you have your all input. You don't need to struggle with your sound card. You don't need to struggle with your routing. It's just plug and play. So that's a big shame. And that is basically what's gonna stand from using it 80% of the time than using it probably 10% of the time. This is a killer workflow. Sync as well by USB is not that wow. I mean, I don't, it's not as good as the rhythm. And actually the funny thing is one day before I record this video, they released the editor and I was like, yeah, super. Now it's, now we're going to have something like the overbridge. Of course not. It was not even like a VST. It's like, it's like an editor, but you can just use it as a standalone. You cannot put it in DAW, so you cannot even automate parameter. I mean, they need to do something about that because come on. And so do I regret to buy it? To be honest, as a Windows user, yes. But if I was a Mac user and I didn't have this input problem i would say no i love the sign i love the workflow i love that it's small it doesn't take too much space you can quickly create an idea in something you can take it everywhere but everything is just ruined with this usb audio but it is what it is to be honest i don't know if i'm gonna keep it uh, i'm hoping that with this maybe this standalone plugin they're gonna release a plugin that you can use in as vst and that you will be able to have something like overbridge in the future i hope so because i cannot use it like i cannot have something like just a master effect i need separate input and i cannot have that so what's the point to keep it i might end up just sampling everything even if it's not the same but sampling everything i can and just put the sample in my rhythm and sell it now if you're wondering taking this one or the 8s for me this one was perfect because six tracks is exactly what i need i don't need much more i rather to have like six that i use all the time the six one rather than have 11 and maybe just use seven you know eight because i really want to use it as a drum machine not as a groove box that's one thing you might consider with the tr 8s you can almost use it as a groove box because you can use some of the track as instrument yeah hope you like this video hope you grab a few tips here and there and see you soon guys bye bye